to my channel and thanks for coming back for those of you that are new thanks for showing up I'm, I'm hoping that I can give you some useful uh, maybe sometimes entertaining information here so I'm gonna start today with a quote that I really like uh, and this is from Sean Jork if you haven't heard of him he's an ultra marathoner um, these are guys that run I think ultras are considered anything over 26 miles or 26.2 miles uh, if that's not enough but he does 50 hundred mile races uh, so anyway his quote is every single one of us possesses the strength to attempt something he isn't sure he can accomplish every single one of us possesses the strength to attempt something he isn't sure he can accomplish. And that's what being a non-traditional student is. Uh, and then, you know, I, I have to confess to you guys, this isn't my first time around the block as a non-traditional student. Um, it's not that I always do things late, but uh, deciding on careers and when to grow up has been uh, maybe a little bit of an issue with me. Uh, so, uh, if you, like me, have been out of school for a minute, maybe this is your first time as a non-traditional student, uh, but I did this when I got my bachelor's degree, which uh, I've been out for a while, and it's, it's 2020, uh, the year of horror, and I finished school in 1999 with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, uh, but uh, that was after uh, leaving a law enforcement career. Uh, so that was a little bit of a challenge because you're not like other students. Uh, and as a non-traditional student, uh, you've lived life and you have, uh, you have commitments, obligations, you have bills. So from my experience, I know that it's it's doable because, uh, you know, like I said, this isn't my first time around the park. So I want to start today with a shout out to my brother, Paul. Uh, thanks for being my first subscriber. Uh, yay, Paul. So Paul has always been there for me. He's always been uh, part of my support network. And that's something you really need. And uh as the first time being a non-traditional student um, and that was a uh, a uh, uncharted path for me like it is for for many of you that are considering the leap but like I said in my last video you're never too old uh, you're still breathing your heart's still beating uh, so you're never too old so if you're looking at the steps um, and this is more specifically for law school uh, at different times, I'll, I'll probably talk about other aspects of being a, a non-traditional student. Um, so the first thing you want to do as you prepare for this journey, and this is something no one else, no one talked to me about. I kind of had to figure this out on my way. And sorry for that beeping because I need to change the battery on my smoke detector. Um, I'm not going to do it now. I don't even have a battery, so sorry. Uh, your first step, you have to go to lsac.org, and that's where you're going to register to take the LSAT. And uh, I'll, I'll put it up in the video uh, post-production, but I don't know when the next one is right now. I know that some of you that recently took the LSAT, they took one under... Uh, I think they call it the Flex LSAT, um, where those students were able to take the entire LSAT from home. Uh, so they did a few things differently. And of course, that's because of the zombie apocalypse, also known as uh, the Corona uh, pandemic. Uh, so when you register, there is a fee to take the LSAT uh, and you'll, you'll make yourself an account and also, this is something that I I messed up on. I could have come out more cheaply. Um, you get the option when you 
make your account and you pay for your LSAT test to register for uh, the CAS, which is the Credential Assembly Service. So I looked at that, I was like, okay, I don't know what the heck that is. I'll worry about it later. Uh, but when you initially pay for it, um, I think it's it may be a one-time thing um, where you get a deal, where you pay for the CAS and your LSAT, and they bundle that up. And you can get um, three, I believe it was three reports sent. You know, it's been almost a, a year, but I don't remember exactly what the deal was, but it's good. Um, you definitely want to do that if you're presented with that option. I mean, you're, you're at the point now where you shouldn't be worried much about saving money. Um, you, if you're going to do this, you got to be all in. And I kind of wasn't when I started. Uh, when I started the process, I had other things going on. And, you know, honestly, it was more of a, a distraction for me to, uh, to take my mind away from other things, just to kind of busy myself. As dumb as that sounds, that's what it is. So what the CAS is going to do for you, they're going to assemble all of your credentials. And when you, um, when you apply to different law schools and you want to do this electronically, I'm not sure if there's another way to apply. I'm sure that there is, but it's 2020. Uh, so just make it easy on yourself and do your applications, apply to the schools electronically. Um, so you're going to want to apply to several schools and, you know, if you're like me, you have a school in mind that would be ideal. And I was fortunate. I got accepted to the school that I really wanted to go to. And I'll talk about that at another time. Um, just because their program works really well for me, you have to pick a program that works for you. Um, but you probably want to apply to that at least three schools and that's I think that's really lowballing it um, so individually if you're having the CAS which uh, the current fee for that to join is 195 bucks so on top of that each school you're applying to you're gonna have to pay a, a $45 a pop uh, but uh, that said there are fee waivers that are available uh, and they you know in extreme cases um, I don't know what they're looking for in that but I believe the information is available on their website so I'll look for that before I post it before I post this and hopefully I'll have that information available so preparing for the LSAT that is a really big thing uh, and you want to put some time into it. Uh, don't do like I did, which was I decided um, like the deadline to take the test that I wanted to take was a day or two uh, before. Uh, right. So I had to hurry up and register and then I th I had about a month to prepare for the LSAT. There are free study courses that you do on your own and that information is available on lsac.org. Uh, so when you pay for the LSAT, they'll give you that option of signing up for that. And uh, I thought that was generally good. Um, there's a section of the test that has logic games and um, that was the area that I struggled the most in. So I spent a lot of time on those, um, just leading up to the actual LSAT, just taking as many of them as I could and making sure that I understood the different kind of um, exams or just making sure that I understood the different kinds of questions that they would have. So that would cut my time on setting them up or understanding which ones I should skip. Uh, you don't get a lot of time. Uh, so if you're going through and you see one that you typically have a lot of trouble with, it's best to skip that and hold it to the end. Uh, 
So what I what I ended up doing was taking the LSAT twice. Uh, the first time I took it, I wasn't happy with my score, but I was completely not mentally prepared. I mean, I I was intellectually prepared for the test. I did a lot of preparation, but I wasn't ready to go there and hurry up and wait. Um, this time is critical. You have to get to the test center on time or you've wasted, you know, your time. So for me, on time is maybe 30 minutes early just to make sure that you get in and you're ready. So they recently went to all electronic testing. So the LSAT was done on, um, on tablets. So when you get in, you sign in, by the time you get your seat and everything, um, and all the tablets are handed out, my experience was that they had issues with the network. Um, so the test that I'm expecting, I was expecting to be there three, four hours, I ended up being there eight hours. It was, it was three, three and a half hours before we even started the test. Um, because of problems with the network, problems with tablets, and they didn't have backup paper tests. And I, I doubt that they will. Um, so that by time you sit down with your test, I was exhausted. So I, I had the option of, of dropping that test because I, I sent in a letter to complain about the whole situation. So they gave me the option of dropping the test and just taking it again for free. Um, but dropping that would have been sight unseen and I wanted to see how I did. And personally, I felt like if, the, if I scored really poorly, that that could be explained on my personal statement. So when I did finally get my score back, it wasn't horrible, <clears throat> but not really, not quite what I was, the score I was trying to get. Um, but, you know, of course I declined dropping that test. Uh, so uh, I decided to take another one. And this time I was mentally prepared for that. But what I wasn't prepared for was the proctors to be whispering throughout the whole test um, and I didn't say anything to them about it and I should have and it's okay. So the next part of the <clears throat> LSAT, <clears throat> I know in, in the past you would also have a written part that you do there uh, but they've changed that so you actually do the written part later at home. And the way that works is they you download some software to your computer and you have to have your camera on and so they can monitor you during the written part. And you can't have anybody in the room with you. You can't have any uh, electronic devices or anything like that. So I, I don't know what happens if you're taking it in your phone rings that you didn't take from the room. So it's better to not even risk it and do it that way. Uh, the next part of your package that is gonna be, um, it's kind of difficult for some people is your personal statement. And, you know, I would say, you know, for us, for non-traditional students, um, and for anybody really, it's you have to be honest but our personal statement is going to be more geared towards your life experience. And, I, you know, I think that's something you have to decide for yourself what you want to talk about. Uh, in mine, I talked about, mine was heavily influenced by the news cycle. So I ended up talking a lot about uh, justice and injustice. Uh, so my personal statement actually started with a Bible scripture and I, I'll put that in the, I'll put that in the description because uh, I can't think of what it is. I'll, I'll really mess it up now if I try to quote it. Uh, 
Letters of recommendation, that's another thing. Um, most, well, actually all of the schools that I apply to need at least two letters of recommendation. Um, so for us, we've been out of school for a while, um, like I said, uh, and you're not going to have professors that are writing your letters of recommendation. Um, ideally, you've been working. Uh, so what, what I ended up doing, I had one recommendation from uh, one of my professional mentors, longtime mentors, and the other one I just asked a co-worker to write it. And what I, what my impression is that they want, uh, and they want a better picture of you. They want an idea of what you're like, uh, how you address problems, how you deal with, uh, challenges. Um, these schools want you to come there, but they want to make sure you stay and make it through the program. And those letters help give them a better picture, um, but when you get your letters, when you ask people to do it, you really got to think about who you're going to approach and how well the person knows you. Um, and one thing I've seen is that law schools aren't so much concerned with titles. Like you might know someone that's very high up in your organization, but they don't know you and that's going to come across in their letter. Um, you may think about getting around that by writing your own letter of recommendation and asking them to sign it. All the sources that I've seen suggest not doing that. But what I did do, uh, particularly for my professional mentor, I went and gathered a bunch of information um, just to, cause it's not something that they're typically doing. And the people that you're going to end up asking to write your letter of recommendation, they're busy people. Um, so I just gathered a bunch of information, put it in a Word document, and said, look, this is the kind of thing that they're looking for. And I outlined a few things about myself that maybe he didn't know. Like, here are some things that I've struggled with in the past. This is how I approach those things. So don't, don't make it a chore for them. You want the person that's helping you get in law school to help you as easily as possible or any professional school, uh, honestly. So, you know, maybe you're not talking to, thinking about going to law school or maybe you're, you've been out of high school for a while and decided to get your undergraduate degree. And that is fabulous. Um, I was 36 when I got my undergraduate degree. So this is the whole theme, it's not too late. Um, so um, I went to a lot of information sessions from different law schools and the theme that I get from everybody, and and I think that's because the, the schools that I really had interest in had part-time programs. Because I, honestly, I, I can't do this full time. I have a job and commitments, responsibilities. I shouldn't say can't because it's possible. Um, like, especially in the financial aid piece, um, your living expenses are part of your, the expense of your education. So when you apply for financial aid, that's all taken into consideration. So if you're at a point where say, you've been a victim of COVID, for example, and you're not working uh, right now, uh, don't be disheartened because it's possible. I know that because I did it. As, as an undergraduate, I did it. I worked, not I didn't work, and uh, I went to school full time to get my undergraduate degree as an independent student. Um, so no one was financially supporting me um, I completely relied on financial aid and I was able to, to meet all of my commitments, all my obligations. I wasn't living high on the hog. I was eating gruel sometimes, <laughs> uh, but it's very doable. So, you know, don't be disheartened if you're not working and, and you're trying to do this. Uh, so law schools now 
take a holistic view of your application. Uh, so if, if your GPA isn't what you think it should be uh, when you're applying to law schools, um, they look at that and they, they look at what, what your course of study was. Um, like, I was a hard science major and I can't compete with some other uh, um, GPAs, just GPA to GPA, because it's not apples to oranges. Uh, because I, the subject matter is much more difficult. Uh, that's that's in my opinion as a science major, um, and schools look at that when they when they're looking at your GPA, they're not just looking at the raw number. They're looking at what you did, and also, it seems to me that your GPA gets less important the further you get away from being in school. Um, so my GPA, like I said, I was an electrical engineer. So mine is on a need to know basis. I'm not giving you that information because you don't need to know it. Uh, but it becomes less important the further you get from your, um, your undergraduate experience um, because there, there really becomes a point where it's not relevant. So schools are going to be looking at what you've done since then, since you've graduated. That's what they want to know about. Um, it's, it's important. I wouldn't just completely dismiss that part of your application. Um, but, and what I did in my personal statement was I tried to make sure I highlight, I highlighted what I've done, uh, since finishing college. Uh, so I think pretty much that is the kind of the process in a nutshell. There's kind of, there's, there's more to it, uh, but I'm not going to keep this video much longer. How long am I? Holy crap. That's long. Uh, I was squinting because I wear reading glasses, but I'm trying to be cool and stuff. So I'm not wearing them in the video. Go figure. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, I hope some of this was useful and I will see you in the next video. Check out this beat.